Hello, welcome to Club IDIC. Tonight, we will be watching Shirley from Star Trek, the original series, and discussing the first caretaker. Please enjoy this meeting. Are you here for amusement tonight? <laughs> well. <laughs> it's good to see you. Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit better today. Well, you're here and that's what matters. Yeah. Oh. Oh, this place is awful. <laughs> Hospitals often are. This is not the hospital, actually. This is a um, nursing home slash rehab center. I will be oh. going back to the hospital. They did my surgery wrong, and they oh. have to redo it. Yeah, I know. Isn't that great? They totally screwed it up. Well, I probably shouldn't show you, just in case you're squeamish. Try me. I can't speak for Heather. Well, I can take anything medical you throw at me. Anthony, oh, yeah. my father died of cancer, so I've seen the grossest of gross. Okay, so this is not the worst. This is like for dialysis. This is not for the cancer. Mm. But they messed it up. Like, they put it too low. So, oh, I'm um, sorry. Uh, it's, I, I knew it wasn't quite right because I've had eight of these Oh, lovely things. It goes up and then down into my heart. I'm sorry. Well, you know, it's, um, well, it's fitting then, isn't it? Tonight's episode is about picking a fantasy. You can fantasize. Hey, my fantasy for the last 15 years has been meeting Dr. Bashir because everything that's wrong with me is something he could fix like that. Well, because he's an augment, right? He's got a superior brain and he uses that brain for good. He's not con. Mm. This is true. This is true. I just remember the conversation, you know, when Cisco had everybody over for dinner and they started talking about exactly that, that the reason why certain people were not allowed in Starfleet was because it did happen. Khan did try to take over. It did actually happen. It was a legitimate fear and threat. And, you know, we... Um, yes, but that's not fair, generalizing everyone that has the same difficulty and struggle is not fair. Painting everybody with the same divergency isn't, with the same brush isn't fair just because one leaf on the tree isn't bad or one apple on the tree is difficult. And this is a very valid point. Um, but I think it's so beautiful in a way that we don't think of beauty. Mm -hmm. The way that different people think. I mean, um, I've really reconnected with my, um, I had talked about before, my cousin Stephanie, who's autistic. And um, and she's got some things going on and, and everything. But, you know, um, talking to her now, where we're both adults and both, you know, she has an insight into behaviors that is is very unique it's something that um you know i've always thought of myself as someone with a very broad um idea but um but she thinks of things just like that like totally totally different way of thinking like her brain's wired so differently um but sometimes she comes up with something and it's like, wait, 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 just a minute. Maybe that's not as crazy as it initially sounded. Like, let's give this a shot, you know? So mm -hmm. 
I did um, mention in another Star Trek group that we had discussed about the possibilities of Bashir being autistic. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think some people actually really put some, hey, wait a minute, let me go back and think on that. Because a couple of people had just really started, I don't like him. He's so horrible. Eh, they, you know, that was mm -hmm. I agree. I agree with you that he might be autistic. I've actually written essays about how he is divergent and how Garrick is divergent and how they get along together so well because they are both divergent and how they were able to find that commonality in such a strange world that might be unforgiving of their quirks. Hmm. Well, you know, well, first of all, you're the one who planted that idea in my head because I don't know um. I am capable of having come up with that on my own. I have shared it, but I, I don't know that I would have just come up with it on my own. Um, but you know, on the on the part of Garrick, um, you know, I think on Cardassia, perhaps that's part of the reason why his dad did not claim him. Maybe that's maybe that's part of the strain on the part of their relationship because it certainly wasn't on Garrick's part. Garrick tried to please him, and all he ever wanted was acceptance from his dad, and and he withheld that. So, and that was a common thing. You know, it, it's still a common thing on Earth that um, that certain people are, are you know, um, are just kind of shoved over in a corner. But, you know, we met, um, we started going to this new synagogue, and this has been it's been several years and uh, this woman walks over to me and he goes, you're autistic, aren't you? And immediately my son is on the defensive and she goes, hold on, wait a minute, I am too. But I think that there might be that connection, maybe that's part of why Garrett reached out to Bashir because he could have reached out to anybody to share that information that he wanted to share about the Klingon. He didn't have to wait for Bashir. Um, but I think maybe there was something, some connection in there that he reached out maybe. <laughs> it's worth a thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole concept of being divergent is not be, being able to live up to what you're expected to do. And that's that's not a bad thing. It's what is. And in the one essay is I, I define Julian and Garrick as divergence because they weren't able to live up to the expectations placed on them. And that's how they were able to define find and define their friendship based on the fact that they were both divergent. And, and I think it's an unrealistic expectation to you. Um, an expectation that we put across the board, even though we're not all cut from the same mold. We're not all the same. We don't have the same talents or abilities and um, it's not a bad thing, you know, it's really not a bad thing. Maybe, uh, maybe if more people were willing to just allow themselves to, to set aside those expectations, they might find out that there's even better, better, I can't think of the word that I'm trying to use here, but 
it that it's even better than their expectations, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, I'm distracted. I've also got Food Network on, so I'm like... Mm, what's on the menu? Um, chicken fried steak. Mm, chicken fried steak. I can't have any. This is the first night of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, so no bread for me. Ah, uh, yes. I can't remember if that's a Passover thing or not. I confuse all uh, the holidays. Okay. Let me see if I can help. Since people always mistake me for a Jewish mm -hmm. person, let me see if I can help. It's Passover. You do and I only know that because there have been all sorts of social media posts about how Passover starts tonight. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. I just couldn't remember. Well, tonight, I can't confuse them all. Tonight is the first night of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread are connected. Um, but tonight starts the, the week of Unleavened Bread. So. Yes. When yeah. does Passover start? I missed that. It's always sun. It's not the day, but the, the sunset, the night before. The night before, exactly. So last night. Oh, okay. Yes, and sundown on Friday night starts the Jewish Sabbath. So yes, when you read, it's a very special Sabbath because it's Hak um Happy Passover, Police Passover. Yes. A million ways to say it, but um, without getting too into this, <laughs> I have two reasons to do this today. Because Leonard mm -hmm. Nimoy's family was Jewish, and he wanted to use some sort of Jewish element. Correct. Yes. And I know I mean, about the I know about the Jewish Sabbath because I was in Fiddler on the Roof Junior when I was 13, 14 years old, and I had oh. to learn about it. <clears throat> Leonard Nimoy's family is also Ukrainian, by the by. Yes. Oh. Yes, I knew that. <laughs> I don't My I think God. he was I think he was born here, but I think his parents were born in Ukraine or something like that. Yes, they were. I have to he look was, it up, but yes, yes. Um my, if if memory serves properly, yes. Um uh, what I was gonna say earlier was when you read social media posts, you know, you get a sometimes distorted if they are time sensitive, you get a distorted sense of when things are happening because you know, if if someone posts like right. the president posted Happy Passover to those who celebrate or whatever, and I don't read it for 21 hours, well, that's the next day, maybe, you know. So mm -hmm. I get right, you get off from what's really happening. That's okay because we're off from Israeli time, which there are there is a rather large group that celebrates on Israeli time, even though we're in the United States. Um, so I usually do that as well, go based off of Israeli time. However, with being in the hospital and now in the nursing home, my sense of time is so warped that I kind of screwed up on that. <laughs> mm. I, I, I missed the mark this year. But. Well, that's okay, but you know what? We still at least have you. You're still with us, and that is a gift unto itself. Yep, Teresa. And when you got us, no matter what, so pretty much. We will bear you up, and we will pray for you yeah. unto whatever gods we worship or whatever that we will that we will have you next year. I um, I actually turned off this Shabbat service to flip over so that I could be with you guys tonight. So. <laughs> mm. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, I, right now I felt like I needed that. Like, so yeah. uh, you guys, you guys certainly, you are enjoying that pizza, man. Hmm. Of course she's from yeah. New York. Of course they're all about pizza over there. Oh, you're from New York. Yeah. That is, that is one regret that I have that while I was on the East Coast, I never made it to New York for, for, uh, for 
the is from New York that moved to Virginia and they actually shipped water in from New York to make pizza. You know, you that flavor. So I actually have, it, it, it does make a difference. People, I know people who will argue that, but it does definitely make a difference. So I, I heard something about, I heard something about New York water recently. I listened to Hillary Clinton's podcast and mm -hmm. a recent episode, she was answering, well, Sorry, that part's not relevant. Um, this is my ADHD brain wanting to go off on the thing that's it's interesting and not relevant. Brain. It's your unique brain. Correct. You got a word. Um, uh, oh, she and her guest, which was Saturday Night Live's Kate McKinnon, mm -hmm. ended up touching on New York water, New York City water, I mean. And apparently the city fathers back in the day um, had this land upstate that they that's where their water comes from and they like keep it up and it's you know owned by the city or whatever and so that's why the water is there is so good is because it comes from this really pure kept up land hmm. and i was like oh that's interesting that is interesting i have yeah. heard and this could be completely off base and wrong but i heard that uh, there was a higher percentage of certain minerals in the water in New York City. Well, I don't that know. Would surprise off the top of my head. Yeah. If they're maintaining the land in a really pristine sort of way, like not using a lot of um, man-made chemicals, then that's probably true. I used to work for a cosmetics company, and I swear this relates, um, that had a skincare line that used an ingredient, I don't know how they found this or knew the, the following, but they said anyways, that the central ingredient in every item in this skincare line was 72 macro and micro minerals extracted from unfarmed soil. And Ooh. I'm going through a time warp right now because I feel like I'm back at that job. Um, <laughs> and actually when they, so, so it comes in, like they process it into a powder form, but before they process it, it's actually a liquid form. And at one point when, I think it was when we were launching that line or something, <clears throat> they sent a little bottle of the liquid to every store and you could drink it. And I did a few times. It's not super bad tasting. And it it's just like pure minerals. And it was like, this is pretty cool. Yeah, but then, like mind, I said, I they put it into line. every item in the line. And never mind that half the, half the places in the city, you have this water going through hundred year old pipes. So you got, unfortunately, mm -hmm. or fortunately, that material, that mineral content. Well, I don't know anything about whether or how they're keeping up the pipes. That's a whole other um, aspect. Uh, just a bit of pointless trivia, Connie. <laughs> well, you know, um, I am not Orthodox. However, mm -hmm. um, there is a separate book of Orthodox rules. And one of those rules is about switching out the different crops in rotation in the field to replenish the minerals. Yep, yep. That crop. Now, it's a sustainable farming technique for sure. So there's like, yeah, it, there's this huge like rule book on it, <laughs> which I will not pretend to know the first thing about because I am not a farmer. And so I kind of feel like that's somebody else's job. <laughs> Sounds lovely. But I have to admit, I thought you were Jewish too. So, um, <laughs> There you go for stereotypes. Like I, I totally base that purely on facial features. So mm. sorry about that. See, so what is get that all the time? But, what but you your... do, you do have some definite, you know, features that resemble. You could pass if if you wanted to, you know. What is your ethnicity, Anthony? I'm not Jewish, that much is for certain. Well, we got that. Maybe I, I, didn't, ask you, I didn't ask you what it was, I asked you what it was. Tell it to the Hasidic dude. 
hat and the curls. Like, he's out. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Are you Jewish? Oh, do they think uh -huh. you're Jewish too? Huh? You know what? The, the Hasidic guys, do they also think you're Jewish? Definitely. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> you, should wear a, you should wear a sign around your neck. I'm not Jewish, damn it. <laughs> Mm. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> you could totally have yeah. some fun, though. I mean, you know what? You, you should totally get you fun. should get ancestor DNA or twenty three and me done just to be sure you're not. Mm. Hey, people have been surprised before, so you know it, it's it's possible. Mm. You know, you never know. So I, I have a whole yeah. side of my family that I know nothing of. Like my paternal grandfather had this whole life before he even met my mom, but he was very secretive about like family history. So, you know, who knows? I could be very surprised right now. I'm a mom's mom, paternal father, and I was very proud of his. He was very proud of his drops of Irish blood. My recently there. Um, but yeah, he, he was mostly mostly German, a little bit Irish. So uh, and my maternal great grandmother was full blood Cherokee Indian. So Every once in a while, we'll have a kid pop up that looks very American. <laughs> well, that's so, interesting because yeah, we, we we've even got some. It's got all of the Native American facial features with red hair. It's great genetics. It's funny. Oh, her connection finally was, gave out. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a I question? Was, Oh, I was just going to make a comment related to something she was saying. I think she didn't realize that I'd started talking. It's fine. And she's back. Teresa, to improve your bandwidth, maybe stay off camera for a minute, because then it might be easier for you to be heard a bit. Would that help you? It, I think it's a here. Uh, Can you? Yeah, you're very choppy. Yeah, and okay. as a bis I'm sorry, our reception's bad. I can talk in sign language, and you can see it the, instead of hear it. The video pauses too, I'm afraid. Oh, well, yeah. That's, right, that's why that. um, Heather said it's like audio only. See if that works. Oh, is that what she said? Yeah, I missed part. Let's see, how do I do that? It's just Turn your the camera off. I don't want to suggest that because I don't want to uh, make you feel less included, but it may help. Is it? Is it any better? Yeah, actually. Oh, you haven't stopped. Oh, so I guess that's a good thing. Well, I heard that sentence without choppiness. Is It was my gauge. Because mm -hmm, video takes up a lot of bandwidth. For sure. I, I have this, <laughs> relative to what we were talking about before that. I have this meme on my phone that I saved to my phone. It's a comedian, and the text on the on the photo of him says, "I'm going to raise money to give free DNA tests to white supremacists to prove that they're not oh. pure blood." Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It gets better. You have to wait till I'm done um, to prove they're not pure blood. It's going to be called. I did not see that coming. Dot com. <laughs> then he goes. Then he goes. Cletus, your test results came back. Are you standing? Well, you might want to take a knee. <laughs> oh, that will never not be hilarious to me. It cracks me up every time. I I I don't know what to say about that, but I miss humor. My brain doesn't interpret that. I admit. Well, that's okay. That's all right. If if I'm the only one who finds it funny, it's no big deal. I what? find it hilarious. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe it's inappropriate, but I thought that was hilarious. Well, it's it's heavily trolling people who are anti-take-a-knee. And take-a-knee, Colin Kaepernick started that. 
yeah, with I remember. going down onto one knee during the national anthem before football games. And he did that to protest p- police brutality against black people. However, a lot of non-black people usually um, interpreted that as mis- disrespect for the flag. When in fact, most of them don't know that an army veteran actually suggested to Colin Kaepernick that a, a more respectful way to protest during the national anthem was to kneel instead of sitting and not standing like the rest of the team. Um, so th- that's why he started doing the knee thing. But a lot of people don't know that. And they think he's being disrespectful when in fact, there's the opposite intent. I did not know that part. And that's interesting. Yeah, my brother-in-law um, is, we don't talk about it very much because we don't talk much. And um, after overhearing him say this, I probably wouldn't talk with him much, honestly. Um, he was like, man, those bastards, you know, I'm never going to watch NFL until while well, they're still doing that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, oh, wow. <clears throat> yeah. He's my, like, my, it up for me. my reasons Lord. for not watching the NFL started way before that. So, well, I feel you. I mean, um, uh, there's so many, so many problems I have with football in general and the NFL in particular. Um, a lot of people also don't know that those all that patriotism stuff before games it didn't used to happen and the military paid the NFL to start doing those like flyovers and carrying the flag out onto the field and the national anthem all that business I mean I don't know if the anthem was was part of that maybe the anthem had been before but in any case um, there's a lot of it that just came about because the military paid the NFL to do it as a like military recruitment tool yeah oh (laughs) something just occurred to me just to go back piggyback a little bit to what we were talking before not don't waste my last word on this i promise well one way you know i'm not jewish is because i just ate a slice of pepperoni pizza and the more orthodox jewish you are the less you eat pork yeah, but that oh, doesn't have I don't need to do with it. Uh, I don't need any pork either, but um, it's the devil's. Yeah, that, that's actually one of the more common allerg- food allergies too. So, yeah, I did see that. <sighs> Just but I love. Yes. I will eat oh turkey God. pepperoni. <laughs> But if you ever get a chance to try beef pepperoni or beef bacon, you I've might give bacon. up the pork in favor of those because they are really good. Oh, bacon on pizza with goat cheese. Mm. Where in your neighborhood is that? Oh, it's a little thing called Panago Pizza that I order because I've got food allergies and can't eat regular cheese. They can't eat cow cheese. No. I'm lactose intolerance on top of everything else that's wrong with me. Hey, I feel you. I finally tried the Daya brand um, pizza. So it's gluten-free, it's dairy-free, and it's got lots of roasted vegetables on it. And it's actually really good. It's really expensive, but it is really good. So I don't like those much. I prefer to make my own or I just order one. It's just... Well, I mean, homemade is always better, but. Well, just making the dough exactly and everything. I've, I've made my own pizza, but I like to overload them with toppings so they never work out that well. <laughs> so, like, somewhere in there, you have to have the cheese and the crust. You probably throw in, like, pepperoni and mushrooms and everything else. It's like a pepperoni mushroom platter. And I prefer a- chicken and hamburger and bacon and ham, actually. Oh, meat lover. Yes. And dairy diet and pineapple and olives. and. Uh, I draw the line on pineapple. Oh. Fruit does not belong on pizza. And back at you. I, uh, my cousin and I used to get in fights over the pineapple on pizza. And I don't know why people are so up in arms about it. Go ahead. I actually tried it and it's not bad, but it's not my, it's certainly not a go-to for me. So 
Oh, really? I, you know what? Whenever I open the, a can of pineapple for something, I drink the juice and it's heaven. <laughs> it is. It definitely is. I make, now we're going to start down in food. So I promise this will be the last food thing here, but I make a pineapple tomato glaze for my meatloaf. Mm. I, I can see that. And work. I think you would like it, Heather. I would. You need to cook for me. I wish I could. Like, I, I totally would. And, you know, instead of, like, making a meatloaf, most of the time I make patties. Um, because it makes it that much easier to have a meatloaf sandwich the next day. Mm. So You could send me the recipe and maybe I'll feature it on a cooking show. I will do that. Man, mm. I was on Amazon today and I came really close to getting this. Star Trek cookbook. Hmm, that sounds fun. But I'm serious about the cooking show. I have a little one on YouTube. Maybe I'll feature it on a cooking show. Well, do you really? Yes, oh, I do. You get you get to share a link, girl. I will share a link. Because I will totally send you my recipe. And um, yeah. Is it called I have this? all kinds of out there recipes? So I'll so dedicate it to you. Yeah. Is it called The Storm and Latter-day Chef? No, it's <laughs> called Cooking with Heather. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember your um, blog name. And that's the only one I knew of until now. You don't remember me making blood in the blender on Halloween? I made blood in the blender out of Smarties and red candy things. And it was actually quite good. And I put it on a... I believe I made a hello, like brownies or something, and then they were quite good. Teresa? Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yep. you know, I, I cook according to whatever fantasy is in my mind, you see. <laughs> oh, really? Hey, um, <laughs> I have this tendency. <laughs> Oh dear, you laughing at it. <laughs> a little bit. That's okay. I dwell on I'm kind of teasing you by, 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 by responding that way. I'm kind of teasing you about your use of the word fantasies, but I'll leave it at that. It's okay, I know. <laughs> Sorry, Teresa. <laughs> okay. It's cracking me up, but um, I have yeah, there's this, blushing. <laughs> this problem that I have um is I watch these cooking shows and I'll see something and something won't be quite kosher or some uh, something I can't eat and I dwell on that food item and dream about it until I come up with a solution to make something similar that I can eat mm. um so I have a lot of those kinds of recipes where I like that's how I created my coconut chicken and Hawaiian rice and Hawaiian cookies was seeing a Long John Silver's commercial for coconut shrimp that I can't eat so yeah. I dwelled on that until I came up with a solution and um okay and it became one of the more popular party foods that I make actually Which, what's the solution don't eat shrimp no you I can't take, not eat shrimp I take chicken and I cut it a little thinner than your traditional like chicken tender. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I use non-dairy yogurt. I dip it in there. Then I dip it in the shredded coconut. You can fry it, bake it, air fry it, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And then I make the rice um, in pineapple juice instead of water. Then at the end, you top it with some toasted coconut. And then my Hawaiian cookies are a gluten-free shortbread with dried cherries, dried pineapple, coconut, and macadamia nuts. That sounds so good. And I get what you do because, you know, being lactose intolerant and having endometriosis, I can't eat everything either. And I have to constantly see how, how can I adapt this food so I don't get sick as a dog, right? So exactly. I get you. Right? Hmm. Did you know that uh, pineapple is not actually Hawaiian? Fun facts. Yeah. It was brought there, brought there by the colonizers. 
Yeah, but you can count on me for the up note. (laughs) (laughs) We love your knowledge and we appreciate it. (laughs) I just heard the silence and I was like, oh crap, I I brought the room down. (laughs) I think I already did that with the breaking of his blood. I do Hawaiian meatballs, Hawaiian chicken thighs. I do Hawaiian chicken, uh, Hawaiian steak. And they're all a combination of barbecue sauce, pineapples with the juice, and um, sometimes a little brown sugar if it's not quite sweet enough. And uh, it's good. Hmm. And we call it Hawaiian. I'm I'm not here to say you shouldn't make those things. And maybe just think of another name. You don't have to take my, you don't have to take my suggestions. I'm just saying. You know, it's wonderful. Everybody cooks according to their fantasies. And you're right. We should all be careful about what fantasy we choose to conjure (laughs) up because some fantasies can lead to trouble or danger or chaos. And that's what the episode's about. Has anybody ever seen this episode? Oh, segue. Nicely done. (laughs) Impressive. That's why she's our leader, right? (laughs) I don't know whether I've seen this episode before. Um, It's possible, but I don't know. Well, you know what? Maybe we should have a refresher course. Okay. We're about about to watch it, right? So. We are about to watch it. So, all right. So, you all know what by now. Let's do that. Does anybody have any questions or anything? Okay. My last word on this before I click mute. Oh, yes. Anthony did request this because it's Easter and he liked the bunny. Oh, yes. The bunny. I almost forgot about the bunny. Um, Did you want to talk about the bunny before we go? Now, I was going to say, go to these recipes. I have a safe bet. Four words Star Trek, the cookbook with Neelix on the cover. I, I came this close to buying it today. Um, I think you should. My question is before I forget, what season and, ep- oh, well, what season at least, oh, or what season um, and episode number is this? Season one, one episode 15. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Much easier to find when you know that. <laughs> yeah. It is easier to find when you research, and that's my responsibility to oh, do. Okay, sorry. I could have looked it up. Damn. <laughs> no, that's my responsibility to have it read it for you so I can answer the questions. Oh, okay. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> All right. It's my job to take care of those seeking a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to stop saying that word unless you want me to keep laughing, because I will. Oh, is it because I have an accent? Step in. No. Oh, step in. oh, sorry, Fantasy Island. Gotcha. Do I sound like oh, Ricardo oh, Montalban? Oh my goodness. The plane. The plane. Oh God, I'm old. <laughs> Aren't we all? I'm probably older than all of you. So. All right. On the show. Oh, so, see you in an hour. I'm okay, sure. Hey.
Well, how did everybody like their venture into fantasy? Uh, hilarious. And yes, you will. You can laugh at me. I don't care. I'm over it. <laughs> Go ahead, Connie. I dare you. You're muted. Sorry. Now I know why you used that word because it was a part of the theme of the evening. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And I actually have seen that episode before. It's been a while, but. Yes. And you know, the interesting thing is I found the quote at the end. The more complex the mind, the greater the need for the simplicity of play, which means even the intelligent need time to rest and play like simple, simple that, folk. Who that need caught me too. Go on. Mm, yeah, I, I see what you typed, Heather, but so I, I kind of agree, but at the same time, I don't know how I'd feel about getting chased in Vegas by a white rabbit. Well, even those who are the greatest minds and those who are the most popular even need moments of rest. You know? Mm. Even geniuses and well-known people take vacations. Right. So I know you've been looking up travel agencies, I'm sure. No. But I tell you this, contrary to popular belief, I do not find the likes of Miami or Cancun to be restful, paranoid. No. Uh, that's not my idea of an ideal vacation. Oh, only thing I know about Miami and Cancun is hot. When I was a teenager, I did some show choir tours. Where and I went to Edmonton, I went to Disneyland, which is in Anaheim, and I went to Ottawa. Have you ever been to Winnipeg? I haven't. I wouldn't like a, I'm not sure I'd like a flashy place with tons of bars, but I'd like some place that I can possibly go to a museum and lots of, see lots of sites and gardens and things like that, because I'm kind of a museum lover. Mm. And perhaps a place where I could maybe go to a show. Uh, without staying, I think I know what you're thinking. <laughs> go ahead. I'm not seeing it happen. And it, 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 it's me and your grin wider than usual tonight. Is my grin wider? Looks like it. Well, you know, I do have some projects on the go and that's nice. And I did help encourage somebody to pursue something they wanted to pursue. So when I help others, I'm always happy. Okay, is that, a, is that one of the lessons you studied, or is it more biblical part of my choice? No, when I actually helped somebody to be able to do something they expressed an interest in, and when I do that, that's helping others achieve something they want to do is one of my fantasies, and when I can help others be genuinely happy with themselves, even if their life is difficult, that's a fantasy fulfilled. Mm. Because one of my old fantasies was, was to have children, and I don't know if I get to do that. So to act like a mother and inspiring others to be able to do what they want, that's a bit of mothering. Have, have you ever considered adoption? Oh, wait, that's a no-go. I won't get into the details because we have other people here, but yeah. It's a go, but it's expensive. I mean, whether it came out of you or came out of some other woman, it's going to be expensive either way. It's, it's a possibility, but if I tried it myself, I might end up dead, and I'd rather not be dead. Well, I mean, to adopt in somebody else's kid? No, if I tried to have my own kid, I might end it's up dead. I, I'm trying to come up with alternatives here. Yeah. If that, wouldn't, if that wouldn't put your life at risk, may I say? To try and have my own kid? Yes, it might. 
All right. No, I we can. You can mention it. It's fine. I'm. I'm uh, no, no, I'll just say it. in the oh oh she's back. I wrote an essay on it. I've been open about it. I had this conversation in December with my doctor, and I've been open about it. It's fine. Okay. That's right. So did you enjoy Dr. McCoy chasing the rabbit? <laughs> that was fun. What did you think of the trip to the fantasy planet? You know, I, I mean, I kind of remembered it, but then I kind of forgot about the whole, you know, he mentions it's like it um Alice in Wonderland and then the rabbit shows up I had kind of forgotten about that um mm -hmm. but yeah, that was fun it's a playground for the weary souls and I think that's something we all need in our life is a playground for the weary souls you know mm, you look like you say you're a weary soul <laughs> Yeah, it says right there in the group chat, I need a vacation. Here's hoping summer or my birthday. I think we're all weary souls, you know, and the good thing about this place is we can all be weary souls together. Exactly. It's even better than vacation. We don't have to like actually, you know, go. Steve. And, you know, with COVID, it's kind of hard to go anywhere right now. It is. I mean, I like like the idea of going to like a Star Trek convention or something sounds great. But is it safe? Like but the getting there part. Like, yeah, I know a few people I, who went to a mission should on like the going. Weekend. Yeah, like I've seen on Twitter, a ton of people went to Mission Chicago and they're reporting, oh, I tested positive for COVID because we didn't mask, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, really? Thank you. I was just about to say that word. Yeah, one of the, somebody who was a presenter or on stage, I forget who, <clears throat> um, contracted COVID and hadn't masked. So a bunch of people got, I mean, not that it's that one person's fault, but. Yeah, a bunch of people got it. Yeah, so this is making me nervous about, about the whole thing, about the convention scene. Maybe I'll wait till 2023 when it's in Seattle, Washington, because my mother's from Washington, so I have a better idea of what things cost in Washington. Oh, I suppose, oh, right. Obviously, mom doesn't live there anymore. No, she doesn't, but I've been there enough. I've been there at least five times, so I have an idea of how much things cost there. She's from, she was from Spokane. Okay. Well, I think the problem is that we're starting to get lax um, because you can go into so many places without a mask or whatever. So we're starting, I say we, meaning a lot of people, they're, they're not paying attention to things. You know, it's mm -hmm. the washing your hands it's the washing things that you touch kind of stuff because yeah it's like any other thing you, you touch and it spreads so well, well you should see the local morons around my way i've seen people out no public service announcement your mask is supposed to cover your mouth and your nose Oh, the ones who wear it down like this? Half the people <laughs> I see in the bus are like this. Mm -hmm. have, they don't, they don't wear a mask at all. Well, the fun part is my, nurses, my nurses are wearing it under their nose. Like, well, there goes the benefit of actually wearing it. Exactly. Like, the fun That's what I'm saying. Teresa defeats the purpose of wearing the thing in the first place. The fun I part is, it. Jill... I never stopped wearing my mask, ever. I never took a break. And maybe I'll be better off. I don't know. My family has taken breaks wearing the mask. They're like, oh, we need to trust the vaccine. But pucky you do. Mm. Well, the vaccine doesn't prevent you from spreading it to other people. 
could have it and be asymptomatic and spread it to others and not even know any of that. And there's that's why that's why masks matter. Yeah. But, yeah. And you know, it would be a nice fantasy if COVID would just go away, but it's not. So we need to be smart about like if we want to do things, all we need to do is wear a mask. That's how we can be safe and still have our lives. I have a friend who's an epidemiologist and he told me a few days ago that this period right now that we're in is the most is the one of the most transmissibility of this whole pandemic. I can believe that. Mm-hmm. So like you know sorry sorry just let me finish this before i forget i all i did was ask him you know would it would it be lunacy to eat indoors in a restaurant right now and he was like and i said i'm triple vaxxed i don't have the other booster yet um second booster um and he goes i wouldn't do it even if you did have that because and then he said the part about the greatest transmissibility so um, yeah, I'm still being, um, a ultra homebody. Go on. Yeah. But like, here's the thing. Like I still wear a mask. I did volunteer at some shows, one at the end of last year, one at the end of this year in my area, but I wore a mask for everything except eating. And even in eating, I sat socially distanced from people because a lot of people weren't wearing masks and I never got sick. I'm able to live my life as as well as I can right now, as long as I take personal responsibility. And that's the fantasy I choose for myself. It's being cautious about the fantasy I want. My fantasy is being able to go back to life, but I know there still has to be some personal responsibility. And that means wearing a mask and being wise about the situations I put myself in. Right, right. Back to life. Back to reality. Are you old enough to know that song? No, but I think it's funny. It's, I'm, I'm, your singing is cute. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, I told y'all I was probably the oldest. So see the gray hair. You don't look old. Well, thank you. <laughs> I have a lot more gray hair than you, Anthony. <laughs> Not that it's a contest. I'm just saying. <sighs> Might as well be though, Gail. Like I'm getting up there. Okay, here it is. How old are you? I asked you your ethnicity earlier and you didn't tell me, so I don't know if you'll tell me your age. Okay, so I was born late 1979. You figure it out. <laughs> okay, Teresa, how old are you if you don't mind sharing? If you do mind sharing, you don't have to. Anthony and I are the same age. Yeah, well, I'm definitely the oldest person on this call, so that's fine. How old are you, Heather? 34. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm 52. So there you I go. Really. I'm sorry. What'd you say, Heather? Are you really? Yeah. You don't look it. You look younger. Well, thank you. Yeah. You don't, you don't look it or sound it. Like, thank you very much. For real. Although I, I'm trying, I appreciate those things because I know they're meant as compliments, but I'm honestly trying to get away from Okay, you, then we won't compliment you anymore. We'll no, no, I don't mean that. I don't. I don't mean you shouldn't compliment somebody or me. Uh, has mean... anybody compared you to a bottle of fine wine? <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's just mm. wine. Fine wines are supposed to be old, aren't they? <clears throat> well, I think there's a, an expression: "Ages like fine wine." In other words the older the better right oh, i don't yeah. drink so i don't know oh oh great now we're dissecting the joke <laughs> I, i'm just trying to make sure i i, I explained did. the joke because i thought i understood it and then i asked you to make sure that i understood it oh my gosh i do know that expression <laughs> oh forgive me aging like fine wine um yeah, I hang out with too many Jewish people. So yes, the idea is the older you get, the better, the deeper, richer flavors. So the better the mind, the better every you know <laughs> everything. Oh, 
I'm sorry, I killed your joke. <laughs> it's alive, it's still alive. Yes. It's like they thought McCoy was dead, but he was yes. right. <laughs> okay, now, now I'm taking a poke at Easter by saying that McCoy has risen. Oh my I goodness. You know what? <laughs> I don't think anybody's <laughs> mad at you for that. I don't think anybody's mad at you for that because of COVID. We have to poke at everything right now. And it's okay. Oh. Mm. Like, that is interesting. McCoy is risen when we thought he was dead and all hope was lost. <laughs> See, I just took another poke. Well, you're, 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 you're the Bible enthusiast, you tell me. This is supposed to be a fun chat, safe chat, so it's okay to poke a little. But okay, anyway. <laughs> so I had to uh, take a little trip down the hall and come back. Did you just make a resurrection joke? <laughs> I'm afraid so. <laughs> and that's okay. Well, he's yeah. a fictional character. We can rag on him. I would not rag on an actual human being. They're like, one, two, three of you here? We said, we were talking about the resurrection of McCoy. Right. And <clears throat> since McCoy is not technically a real person, that's okay. Right. Um, I, there's some problematic elements in that episode. <laughs> Mm, but well, okay. George Decay with the revolver. Well, my changed. problem is more with uh, the little, you know, light misogyny that we saw multiple examples of. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, I remember that. There's okay. that stuff, but but also one thing I found weird was that at first it was anything you were thinking of at the moment even if you didn't happen to want it. Like, like Takei thought of, or I use the actor's name, sorry. Sulu thought of a tiger, just thought of one, and there no, one no, was. No, it wasn't Sulu. Sulu didn't, thought of a gun. Okay, whoever, okay, whoever, sorry. I'm officer of the week. Okay, now I'm being nitpicky. No, you're fine. You're fine, you're fine. Yeah, whoever um, that was. I'm just saying, like, somebody you. happened to think of a tiger, and there one yeah. was. Someone happened to think about, you know, World War II planes, and there they were, and I'm just like, but then the guy who was the head of the planet was like, oh, this is your fantasy. This is anything you want can come true. Sometimes some of the things that had come true were not what they had wanted. And yeah. then at the end, and oh. then at the end, they all decide to stay, even though there was no real resolution. It's like, if you're staying on that planet and the guy who's the head of the planet doesn't agree to change how it works, you're still going to have problems, but they just totally ignored that fact. And oh, just yeah. Like, okay. And the funny thing is, right, looking at the doctor, okay, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, so Bones has a boner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. But that's probably, you know, care. I never said caretakers knew what they were doing, nor are they nice. They just said choose carefully because... And they didn't exactly explain how the caretaking process worked. They said, oh, humans aren't ready to understand it. Nor did the caretakers explain things to Janeway. Not really. Oh. She had to push. Interesting sure. you should bring that up because I didn't really think about the whole well, connection of caretaker, caretaker until you started using that word again. I'm like, oh, Janeway, you know, Voyager. Well, there was a caretaker then. Yeah. And there was a caretaker now, because obviously the caretakers weren't very good at their caretaking job. They just kind of <laughs> sort of amused humans for their own amusement, and they pissed a lot of people well, off. Yeah, they didn't say whose amusement the park was for. <laughs> Using people for their own ends and it pissing a lot of people off. Who does that remind me of right now? <laughs> Think okay. world stage. Well, you know, um, <laughs> geopolitical situation on this planet exactly and you don't want to get me started about that topic because i will rant and rave okay so yeah funny little side note if you ever i forgot i gotta go on amazon look this up i forget the exact title like the travel guide for star trek 
Mm-hmm. Okay? Charlie's Planet is listed as a destination. It's fun and it's cheap. What what is listed as a destination? The shore leaf planet. Oh. <laughs> In this episode. Okay. Did they just call it the shore leaf planet because it was yeah. never given a name in the episode? <laughs> they learned that lesson and then they named Risa. <laughs> That's funny. Well, do you think there's any correlation, though, between the caretakers mm-hmm. and the aliens? that were aboard deep space nine for if wishes were fishes or if wishes were horses i think is the wishes name fishes okay no 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 i think it's if wishes were hor- yeah, the one where the second time the the baseball player and um rumpled stealth skin showed up I'm vaguely remembering that episode right now. It's been a while. Because in that one, Cisco realized very last minute that it was their imagination that was creating everything. <laughs> the danger to the station was all in Dax's head because she imagined it. The so reason I- it's sort of... Go ahead. Well, I, it just, that's what popped in my head, you know, that's where my I ch- head went. I chuckled because it took them in this episode, like three quarters of the way through the episode for them to realize, oh, our thoughts are creating this problem when like the very first incident is that somebody talks about someone and then two minutes later sees them. Like that's the very first incident. And then the next, uh, well, the first one before the credits was a little different, but anyways, um, point being, there were incidents within moments of each other, multiple incidents within moments of each other where somebody was thinking about something and that thing appeared and they didn't realize, oh, it's our thoughts until three quarters of the way through the episode. And I'm like, hello. <laughs> well, I think there was an aspect of them being somewhat confused. You know, when when Kirk was having his... Um, conversation with Ruth it was was very clearly not thinking properly like you could almost see him snap to when when he was being talked to so it's almost like he was under the influence of something else because he was certainly not thinking as a Starfleet captain he was not thinking as a man with people under his command right. because even um even on other episodes we saw where you know people were being influenced by an outside force but Kirk remained as these are my people I'm responsible for these people and he totally seemed to have lost that like he was not he was not there yeah which of course is not normal kirk because i mean it's it's we we realize this kirk was very much so in control of himself um Mm -hmm. i can't remember i'm i'm not as good with names on some of the other shows as i am with deep space nine but the the flowers with the spores and it made people fall in love the it wasn't fascination that was a deep space nine one um but um but at the end when they were giving out the antidote Mm -hmm. and and bones and spock were saying I, i believe it was spock's line but i could be wrong it could have been bones um that he hadn't gotten the vaccination yet against the spores but his love of the enterprise outweighed the influence of the spores but it seems like in this case you know his 
the, there was definitely some influence over his mind that was stronger even than that because and that's just how good he was as an actor that you just you see it and feel it I do have a question for all of you. As soon as we were talking about the caretakers and their inability to be good caretakers, I wondered, do you think the caretakers are part of the Q continuum? And that made me think of a, of a graphic novel called The Q Conflict. Have any of you read it? No. It involved the Q continuum kidnapping the crews of Kirk, Picard, Janeway, and Cisco, and gathering them onto a field and putting them into teams headed by, like, and all of the Q continuum had a battle to see which could come out on top. And of course, it was chaos. They said the continuum was in chaos, and so they used all four crews to see if they could resolve the conflict. So that the key. That has to be fan fiction, doesn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it's it? Yeah. It's an actual graphic ah. novel. Here it is. Well, oh, wow. I mean, who wrote it is the question. Um. I mean, I don't. I'm not going to know the name one way or the other unless it's it. Scott unless Tipton, it's it. David Tipton, with artist David Messina. Oh, yeah. my, point, my point is not to to learn those names because I don't know who those people are. My my point is, was that written by fans or not? I don't or know. Was it written by Was book. it written by people who've written for Star Trek before? Do, does that happen? Fan fiction. It's my an IDW book. Well, does, only thing I can tell you recently, I know IDW is still publishing that Mirror Universe comic series with the TNG cast. I, I just wonder that maybe, you know, the caretakers are the early version, like this caretaker is an early version of the Q, and they did what they did to Kirk's crew, not for Kirk's amusement, but for theirs, and then they realized, oh, Kirk and his crew don't really understand what's going on, so we have to really dumb ourselves down for these people and say, oh, let's be easy on these humans so they don't freak out. Hmm. Well, I, I think... Um, it's interesting, but, but I think, you know, we have seen throughout our time dealing with Q that there are, there are other Q that are not like him and that they often disapprove of him. So, and they have pretty much free reign of the universe. They can go anywhere in space and time. So it is possible like that their race is out there doing things like you know the caretaker that, and, that is a i mean q know. also procreate so maybe this is q's ancestors i don't know <sighs> almost like and the then, old old trek question you know see the character from trillane trillane from the original series so got the quick liberace oh my god say something old again it's okay, but you know, I know who Liberace is. We already, I mean, it's just a thought. Q do procreate. We've seen it. So maybe these oh, are. Yeah, I answers. remember that. Like, like, like the ET, ET. Okay. This is how, this is how Q reproduce. Zap. Yes. Oh, if, oh my God. I'm about to go on a mini Q rant. If you want. Q was a very, um, he, he was a very astute character. <laughs> he was always like intellectual, but not in a good way. Like, let me see. I remember he got beat up by Cisco. He never bothered Cisco again. But with Voyager, they kind of dumbed him down a little bit over the seasons. He's not like not like an enemy enemy. He's just like, I don't know, Jane Way's wacky next door neighbor. And me looking at Picard now. I see him going back to form. Of course, it's all my opinion, my two cents. Feel free to challenge at your leisure. I don't challenge it, but I think Hugh is losing his intelligence as he ages and making some very stupid decisions without considering the consequences, not only for others, but also for himself. 
I don't think he ever considered the consequences. Remember, all the way from our very first episode of Next Generation, Q did what he wanted, even when the continuum was very against whatever he did. They took, they stripped his power. That's true. And he chose, given the choice of anywhere to go, he chose to go and annoy Picard. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could have gone, I mean, because he's Q, he could have gone to Janeway. He could have, you know what I'm saying? He could have gone anywhere. Like, Um, eventually they lose contact with Q by the time of Discovery Late, do they not? So obviously what Q did to humanity, constant interference, constant annoyance, that cost the continuum in the end. Well, and Q as in the Q that we think of when we say Q was barred from how many planets? I mean, considering the fact that he had the powers that he had, could they really have barred him from the planet without... I guess he chose to accept that. I mean, really, because he he had he had so many powers to do whatever. Um, But we know from the conversation between him and Vash that there were lots of planets where he was the god of lies, where he was banned, where he was wanted dead or alive, preferably dead. Um, we also know that Q could be killed by other Q, but not necessarily by anyone else. We don't know that. That's true. But this Q in this episode, let's just pretend he is a Q caretaker. They're probably the same. There's just different levels in which they advocate their powers for themselves or other people. I'm sure they're the same type. But there could be different levels of ability. I mean, we know what the lifespan of a Q is. So maybe they are, because um, obviously um, when the lady, whose name I can't remember, aboard uh, the Enterprise, she thought of puppies and the puppies appeared she saved Riker by wishing that the yes that would have taken me a google search in some time um so she obviously didn't understand her abilities so maybe there are Q out there that don't realize their ability they don't understand what they're capable of until they've been taught and if they're not you know kind of learning from an older wiser cue you know maybe maybe there are some out there who have those abilities but they don't realize they have those abilities and they're learning as they go oh I can like think of something and it appears so they do that over and over, but they don't understand fully yes. what they're doing. Like Wesley and the it. Traveler. Yes, like Wesley and the Traveler, exactly like that. I don't know. I think it's not just Q, but kind of like higher life forms in general. Who like, are to um, us, like basically comparing that to Q to us will be like comparing us to a rodent. Hmm. And I think there's a lot of validity to that. I mean, think of Guinan, for example. There are races out there who have capabilities. Q was very visibly scared of Guinan. And the ha-ha moment of that episode was when Guinan stabbed them in the hand with a fork. Oh, that, oh, yes. She enjoyed that moment. She enjoyed that moment, but um, but I, I I get the feeling like there's 
because we encountered so many races, even in the Gamma Quadrant, that seemed to have abilities that it, we couldn't explain and we couldn't understand. And maybe they're related somehow because um, we are given hints at a relationship between Guinan's people and the continuum. We're given hints at these things. I mean, the founders even. Mm -hmm. um, could there be like they're higher on the evolutionary scale, but not as high as the Q. You know, some an omnipotent beings, is that the word? Yeah, some omnipotent beings use their power for good and some use it for chaos. And some initially intend to use it for good, but it comes out interpreted as chaos. And that's what this episode is about, right? This, this caretaker, but we don't know how many caretakers there are. They literally intended their power to be used for good and come out as good, but the enterprise interpreted as chaos. And they're like, oh my gosh, we're all going to die on this planet. And this caretaker had to come down and say, no, this is supposed to be for good, but you have to be careful how I don't know. thoughts Maybe come out. Like the customer service rep at a Las Vegas casino. It's supposed to be a fun experience. But I've seen, look at people who lose their shirts. I don't play in Las Vegas casinos. I haven't done that once. I I don't either, but I think um, I think sometimes they have the idea that they are being benevolent. I mean, think of the Q, Q when he put humanity on trial. He thought of himself as the savior. He thought of himself as he was doing humanity a favor. And they didn't appreciate him. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a, a spiritual, there's a flaw in his theory because in biblical terms, the savior is supposed to be perfect and Q is not perfect because he is too judgmental to be perfect. Okay, thank you. So now I'm judgmental. Oh, you're not judgmental. Ah. Do you need some chocolate? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> well, that, I got a It's a side effect of Easter. No, I'm waiting for Easter to end. You know what's the best part about the end of Easter? Care to guess? Discounted chocolate? Uh, Price candy. <laughs> it's all 50% off. Uh, yep, 50% off. Yep. I got a king size Milky Way. I'd give it to you, man, but I can't quite get it to go through them. <laughs> if there was only dairy free chocolate, I would just go to town. Uh, there sorry, it is. You're allergic to cow juice. I'll probably eat some anyway, just a white, because the play will be over. I'll get nice and chopped up a bunch. I can handle small doses. I bought the king size um, for my nurse. Yeah, but like, like because a chocolate everyone's rabbit. Rabbit. You know, that's interesting. Like everybody's got their fantasies. Just mine is to be someday healthy and free of all this stuff. I think everybody's fantasy is to be healthy, right? Okay, so this is how my brain works. So I was sitting here well, in the hospital a couple of weeks ago. And I was thinking, man, what I would do if I had a replicator that could make any food and what I would, you know, what I would make first. And then I had this sudden revelation. Well, it's not actually made from dairy or gluten. I could order the biggest, greasiest pizza, burger, whatever I wanted. Because it's just the molecules. It's like not actually dairy, right? So I 
Yeah, it's just, it. it's, it's whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have the dangerous things. It's whatever you want it to be. So, um, yeah. So I was loving that idea. So much so that I woke up for my little fantasy starving and like, oh, great. Now I don't have anything to eat. <laughs> yeah. No. You know, if you oh, could just go to the planet. Okay, oh. so here's a thought. If we could go to a planet and think of things we could do or eat or be, what would we do there? Oh, I have put entirely too much thought and too many hours of my life in this. So um, I do actually have a rather lengthy answer. <laughs> That's okay. So my thing is, my thing is like, I would, I would have like this big, huge compound like thing with all my friends and family in it. Everybody would be healthy. Everybody would get along and we would just eat and drink and be merry for tomorrow we die. Kind of. But yeah, <laughs> like it, I thought this so far out, like I have pets in this fantasy. Like, have you ever seen a German giant rabbit? No. It is, it is a rabbit that is as large as a dog. If you get a chance, Google it, look at the images. I want one of every color. Like in okay. in my, th I've got this whole like big garden built for them with with you know big habitat where they can go and eat whatever they want to out of the garden. They're safe from predators. Of course, they don't have a whole lot of predators because they are huge. Okay, Teresa, that's nightmare fuel. A uh, rabbit the size of a Doberman. Yeah. It, well, not quite the size of a Doberman. It's closer to a German Shepherd, but yeah. Google well, so it. Like a, meat, a rabbit that's a meter long. They're they're real. The Germans the Germans bred them for meat, and they are huge. An Uber rabbit. Okay. It sounds interesting. It sounds like it's, a lovely. It's thing. called German Giant. I I had a Flemish Giant, which is not as big as the German, but still big. I had a harness for. We used to take her to the farmers market because um, rabbits have this sense about you know fresh foods and stuff. So we used to take her, and man, everybody wanted to feed the bunny rabbit. So. I would intentionally not feed her breakfast. We would go to the farmer's market. She'd get so excited because she knew what was coming. Everybody wanted to feed her. We got so She got so much free food on farmer's market days because they just enjoyed feeding her. So, um, yeah. Sounds All right. Funny. Like, what do they have in Germany? Cats, they put a saddle on? And ride it into battle. I have not seen those, but the rabbits, you know. Uh, but I love rabbits, man. They're um, they do uh, they do have their distinct little personalities, but I do love my bunny rabbits. Who would like? And or are you done? Are you done? Yeah. I mean, just my whole little setup in my head is this massive place, rolling hills, flowers and everywhere. With a saddle on its back. <laughs> the, the cats. That sounds awesome. Now, hey. also, I'm going to half off chocolate rabbits. Well, for me, anyway, I, I think Heather will be a death sentence, but. 
<laughs> Who would like to go next? What's the question exactly? If you could go to any, if you could go to a fantasy planet like the crew did in this episode, what would you? What would what what would be there? Um, I'd have to think about that honestly. Okay. Anthony would be in like a Willy Wonka type planet, like. Everything. Also nightmare inducing. I think he'd literally be in a mega Comic Con where he'd be the photographer and make tons of money. To be fair, oh, <laughs> thank you. Because he literally is the king of Comic Cons, and he'd literally spend a freaking week at an entertainment con if he could. Just to be fair, knowing Anthony and how much he talks about loving them. Yes, even though granted, I wasn't able to go to Chicago. Am I, am I on the nose, Anthony? Are you on the nose? No, you're, you're over there. I, I'm no, am I, am, I, am I guessing accurately? I, I, know what you, I know what you're trying to say. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just like still in psychological voodoo to your mind. I know. Well, what's your what fantasy? You say? What's your fantasy then? Um, leaving money on my Maybe pocket. you should have worded that just a little differently. <laughs> he knows what I... <laughs> I can't even look, give you a straight... That was, that was vague and very open-ended. Okay, like, so what is your fantasy, it. what is your fantasy shore leave on a planet? There's a better, safer, G-rated mm -hmm. question. <laughs> <laughs> um, everything but being hey. strafed by an airplane. What? Anything but being being fired upon by a fighter plane. I, I can deal with a tiger or the wacko from Starfleet Academy. I mean, like, what is yours? Like, put this aside. Like, what's yours? Teresa? What would show up? What would show up for you? What thought would pop into your head that would show up on the planet? Mm. Oh, what I what would I get? I don't know, maybe that's a good question, actually. I have no idea. I'm telling you, Willy Wonka. Pizza would grow on trees, chocolate bunnies would oh, hop through the forest, oh, and you could just snatch them up. Oompa Loompas. No Oompa Loompas. No Oompa Loompas. But I think, like, Mission Chicago would probably be my idea of a fun time. Doing photography, right? Just being around Star Trek people in general. I have not been to a real Star Trek event since Mission New York, by how many years ago? Mm. No, uh, just for the heck of it. You know, I'm, I'll be signing off in a few minutes. It's already 22.30 my way. Okay, well... I guess I can share mine before you go. Okay. I wouldn't mind doing more and writing and entertaining and bringing joy to the world and helping people like be entertained and be happy through my works. So, so that would be my because since I can't, you know, add to the population, I'd like to entertain the population. Oh, 2016. You know? Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that for a while now, but I'd like to do more of it. And I, I would like to have the healthiest, a healthier body to be able to do that even more than I do now. Yes. I like it. It's simple and, but it's yeah. also a very noble cause. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't expect you to have the Bausch desires anyway. Well, 
it's what I've got. And, you know, do you think that what the Enterprise crew, what do you think they wished for when they realized that the illusions wouldn't, that the dreams they had wouldn't, weren't actually meant to hurt them? Do you think they actually had a good time? Or do you think they were reeling from the experiences they already had? Well, at, at least Kirk got what he needed. Well, he usually had these episodes, he usually does, but remember well, I yeah. was describing as a crew member <laughs> who's been hyper, who needs rest, he doesn't make no orders, he's a threat to the ship. So Kirk is like, who is this person that I need to reprimand? And Spock was like, James. It's Kirk. you. <laughs> well, yeah. and he said at the end that he did enjoy himself. We just didn't get to see that part. They cut they cut right from the caretaker dude explaining it, that whole wrapping up, to now everybody's back. So we didn't see the whole, oh, they actually enjoyed themselves for a while part of it. Uh, yeah. but, but he said they did. So They did show Kirk enjoying himself. He got to beat the crap out of a bully that he probably didn't get to beat the crap out of at the Academy because of Academy regulations forbidding it. Well, I meant after the caretaker was done talking to them. That's true. And then they stayed for a while to just enjoy themselves. We didn't see that part. That's true. But like, you know, when Spock came and found him, he's like, did you enjoy yourself, Captain? I did enjoy myself. And Spock, that, Spock was like, oh, that proves my theory. Excuse me. And who wouldn't enjoy beating up someone that tormented them? Like, violence is not the answer, of course. But right. the but least difference is this, you can't go to jail. That's true, but in a fantasy where no, there are no consequences, who wouldn't enjoy that sort of thing? Hmm. Only in fantasy, though. Yeah. Alrighty. And I thought the, the scene between McCoy and Burroughs was cute. Burroughs was awfully possessive of the doctor. Oh, yeah, with the Vegas chicks at the end. <laughs> And McCoy was awfully flirty. Oh, go on, put it on. I want to see you in that sexy dress. Well, I'll say this. Never going to see that in any subsequent version of Star Trek. That's true. But I do think that we had a lovely time on this fantasy journey and this fantasy planet, did we not? Yes. And I don't want to talk. Do we, do we all have other comments that we wish to talk about? I'm I'm good. Connie. I mean, I'll stay if if you guys are staying, but I know Anthony's about to leave. Well, I will depart. All right. So since we're all Teresa, do you have anything left to say? Well, I was just gonna say, you know, I personally think that um Heather, you should write more like do do some um short story stuff and um and definitely share that with us because we want to read it well i have been and i've also been working on some fan fiction and extra acting and other entertaining things i'll share the links okay but um, thank you very much for coming to this fantasy meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. I hope you all got the fantasies you wished for. And okay. Don't be afraid to wish for more. As Imag long as they don't kill you. Imagination's a wonderful thing, as are fantasies. Always hold on to them and never be afraid to wish and hope and dream. Yes. I love uh, you all. Night. She can't do anything, but okay. Night, Anthony. Night. Happy Easter weekend. And all the other religious holidays. <laughs> Good night. She's going to throw it all together like that. Well, I don't know all of them, so I want to make sure I include all of them. <laughs> no, it's all good. I was just teasing. Okay. Love you all. Be safe. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for coming. Have a good night, everybody. Ditto. Great. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Hey.
Thank you for coming to tonight's meeting. Live long and prosper.